We previously introduced the Epsilon Delta definition of continuity, link in the description to that video. Today we're going to introduce a more strict type of continuity called uniform continuity. We'll see the definition, do several examples of proving uniform continuity and proving that something is not uniformly continuous, and we'll see some relevant theorems. This video has chapters, so you can skip around as you please. It will be helpful to begin with a couple of examples. Suppose we want to prove that x squared is continuous in the traditional sense. Here's the proof. It's pretty standard and straightforward. Since we're trying to prove that x squared is continuous on all reals, we would take an arbitrary real number c and then we would consider all x that are within delta of c. And then we would consider the distance between f of x and f of c, which by definition of the function is the distance between x squared and c squared, we would factor the difference of squares, and then we know that x minus c is less than delta, so we could replace it with delta to make the expression bigger. As for the absolute value of x plus c, we could subtract c and add c inside those absolute value bars, which is just adding zero, but it's useful because it allows us to apply the triangle inequality. This is less than or equal to this, where we've split the absolute value across this sum, leaving x minus c in one absolute value and c plus c, or 2c, in the other. At this point, we see that we can replace the absolute value of x minus c with 1 if we insist that delta is no more than 1. And then with this expression, it's clear that our other restriction on delta is that it should be no more than epsilon over 1 plus 2 times the absolute value of c. That way, we can replace delta with said expression, and then these things will cancel out and just leave behind epsilon, thus completing the proof. Importantly, we should note that the value of delta here depends on c. It depends on the real number in question at which we are establishing continuity. Larger values of c, in this case, will require a smaller value of delta, since x squared gets steeper and steeper as x gets larger. This is a picture of that fact and a written out example. For example, if epsilon is equal to 1 and c is equal to 1, then delta equal to 1 third is sufficient because as long as x is within 1 third of 1, that is between 2 thirds and 4 thirds, x squared will be within epsilon of c, that is x squared will be between 0 and 2. On the other hand, if c is equal to 20, a much smaller delta is required. If we tried to use delta equal to one third, x being within one third of c equals 20 would mean that x is between 59 thirds and 61 thirds. But clearly that doesn't imply that x squared is between 19 and 21 because each of these values, 59 thirds and 61 thirds, each of those are about 20. Squared is way bigger than 19 or 21. Clearly this delta doesn't work. Instead, in this case, a delta of 1 over 41 will work, which is quite a bit smaller than 1 third. We see as c gets bigger, delta needs to get smaller to stay within that epsilon neighborhood. This is in contrast to a function like 2x plus 3. To prove that this is continuous, it's very straightforward forward, and the value of delta does not depend on c at all. No matter what c is, delta equals epsilon over 2 is sufficient to establish continuity at c. So in this example, the choice of delta doesn't depend on c. And this is the key difference between what we know as continuity, or a function being continuous, versus this new stricter thing of being uniformly continuous. 2x plus 3 is in fact uniformly continuous, whereas x squared on the real numbers is not uniformly continuous. Now let's see the actual definition. We say that a function f on a set a is uniformly continuous if for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero so that any two numbers from the domain being within delta of each other will have images under the function that are within 
epsilon of each other. One big difference you should notice with this definition compared to the epsilon delta definition of standard continuity, like we saw, for a uniformly continuous function, the delta doesn't depend on c. And so it shouldn't be a surprise that in the definition of uniform continuity, we actually don't see a single point c. Uniform continuity is defined on an entire set unlike continuity traditionally, which is defined at a single point C. So with uniform continuity, if you give me an epsilon greater than zero, I'm able to give you a delta greater than zero so that if you take any two points in the domain that are within delta of each other, doesn't matter where they are as long as they're within delta of each other, the images of the function at those points will be within your provided epsilon of each other. Again, speaking of this in terms of traditional continuity, with C's and deltas and all that, uniform continuity is clearly a stronger condition than continuity, because for a uniformly continuous function, given that epsilon greater than zero, a single delta can be chosen that's going to work for all points C in the domain. Unlike a continuous function that's not uniformly continuous, where the delta is going to depend on C. Still considering individual points C, for a function to not be uniformly continuous would mean that there's some epsilon value, say epsilon naught, for which no single delta is a suitable response for all points C in the domain. The delta could work for some Cs in the domain, but if the function's not uniformly continuous, that would mean there's some epsilon, epsilon naught, so that there's not going to be a single delta that works for all points in the domain. Even if it works for some, it can't work for all if the function's not uniformly continuous. Now, we began by seeing how the continuity of x squared was meaningfully different than the continuity of 2x plus 3. However, if we look at x squared on this closed and bounded set, the interval from negative 5 to 5, the function is in fact uniformly continuous with this as its domain, and the proof is straightforward. Remember, back when we looked at x squared on the real numbers, when we had the absolute value of x plus c, that's where we ended up doing some work that got that c kind of stuck in our process. But in this case, when we're looking at x squared on a bounded set, we'll run into the same situation, but have a much more slick solution. In this case, when we factor the difference of squares, the absolute value of x plus y, we know has to be less than or equal to five plus five, which is 10, because we know that x and y come from this bounded set. And once we see that, of course, we see that picking delta equal to epsilon over 10 is going to work out just great to get us that epsilon. And this proves that x squared on this domain is in fact uniformly continuous. We'll see in a moment that just because a function is continuous on a bounded domain doesn't mean it's uniformly continuous. In this case, the domain wasn't just bounded, but also closed. In particular, it was a compact domain, and really, that's the key. So this is an important theorem. I'll leave a link in the description to the video where we prove it. It turns out that a function that's continuous on a compact set is uniformly continuous on that set as well. So x squared was a great example of that. We saw that it wasn't uniformly continuous on the reals, even though it is continuous on the reals, but on this compact set where we know it's continuous, it turns out it's also uniformly continuous. We'll finish this discussion by looking at a function that's continuous but not uniformly continuous on a bounded domain. Here's a theorem that can be useful for showing a function is not uniformly continuous. I'll leave a link in the description to the video where we prove this theorem. It says that a function f on a set A fails to be uniformly continuous if and only if there exists some positive number epsilon naught and two sequences in the domain, xn and yn, such that the distances between the terms of the sequences approaches zero, 
but the distances between the images of the terms of the sequences does not approach zero. It's always greater than or equal to that positive number, epsilon naught. So the idea is we find these sequences in the domain whose terms get arbitrarily close, but where the images of those terms do not get arbitrarily close. And that shows a function isn't uniformly continuous. For this example, we're going to use the function sine of one over x, which is continuous on this bounded domain, the open interval from zero to one, but not uniformly continuous. The key, of course, is that as x approaches zero, the argument one over x gets arbitrarily large, causing very rapid oscillations in the sine function. As a result of these very rapid oscillations near x equals zero, we're going to be able to pick out terms whose horizontal positions approach zero, but whose images are one and negative one, and thus very far apart. So applying the theorem, we're taking epsilon naught to be two, because I know we're going to be able to pick out positive and negative ones from the sine function, and those are two apart. So here are our two sequences. xn is one over pi over two plus two n pi. Each time we plug a term from this sequence into the function, we will get positive one. And yn, our other sequence, is 1 over 3 pi over 2 plus 2n pi. Each time we plug a term of this sequence into the function, we will get negative 1. And that's all we need to use this theorem. Clearly, the terms of these sequences have distances that approach 0, because each of these sequences themselves approaches 0. The denominators just get arbitrarily large as n grows. However, the distance between the images of the terms of these sequences well, that's always two because it's just the magnitude of one minus negative one. Hence, by this theorem, we know that f of x is not uniformly continuous. We found two sequences in the domain, the open interval from zero to one, where the sequences get arbitrarily close together, but the images of the terms of the sequences stay quite far apart indeed. Again, this shows that the function fails to be uniformly continuous on this domain. It would be uniformly continuous on a compact domain, but this domain is not compact. The function is not uniformly continuous. So that's an introduction to uniform continuity, some relevant theorems, and interesting examples. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Real Analysis course and Real Analysis Exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to additional videos and extra practice, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in my courses. Thanks for watching.